Just another quick video update on the uh, 890 Duke R. Uh, added a few more parts, I guess, to try to make it uh, uh, more safe or more, um, I guess, less susceptible to damage should I take it out on the track or, uh, or dump the bike. Um, if you've watched my last video, you're probably wondering, well, where's the track day footage? And uh, there is none, simply because the day before I was supposed to get out on the track, um, I injured my foot and it swelled up so much I couldn't get my boot on. So that was kind of crap. Uh, anyway, so I've got some um, frame sliders here. I saw these online. Another guy posted them on his YouTube channel. Um, like they're they're I guess a compromise between what appear to me the really flimsy uh, KTM power parts ones that sort of come up like this and the over-the-top um, GB racing uh, case covers that are I don't know 350 bucks Canadian or something like that plus shipping from the UK so um, you know it's a it's a I guess a decent compromise um, the only thing about this side is that I felt this whole piece sat far too proud of the case cover itself so I uh, went through my box of spares and, and I came up with some uh, these are all spacers that are a bit uh, shorter so it doesn't sit so far out from the bike and the other thing too the bolts that were supplied were threaded all the way to the Allen head which slightly impacts on strength but I always thought that was kind of sloppy um, I think they should have had something that had, um, again, using my dad's terminology, grip length or unthreaded um, shaft all the way to say here, and then the threaded piece is only what goes into the case itself. The the ones that are threaded the whole way are are kind of, I don't know, they're universal. And and anyway, I had enough of them lying around in my big old box of bits that I got uh, the correct length bolts with considerable. Um, grip length or unthreaded piece to, to bolt into the case so um, it should be uh, good and solid uh, hopefully I never have to try them out but that's the whole point of frame protection right um, got the EvoTech rad guard installed um, simple installation uh, I think a number of guys have pointed out this EvoTech does some interesting environmental um, initiatives in that uh, it comes in a cardboard box it's wrapped in in uh, recycled paper uh, there's no plastic or foam um, protecting it and of course it arrives in good shape so good install and um, yeah nothing like having your day ruined by a hole in the radiator uh, purely on a cosmetic front um, the, the mirrors here I thought were absolutely fantastic however like anything good quality like good quality mirrors uh, they stuck out a ton and looked horrific. So, taking them off, um, I've replaced it with this uh, driven bar end mirror that I got for, uh, you know, it was an incomplete kit online. Um, uh, I didn't have the bar end plug. So, what I did is I mounted it. Uh, I, I have a variety of, of the expanding plugs that go into the bar, but it just didn't hold it secure enough. Like I could just feel that after about 20 kilometers of bumpy roads, it would loosen off and, and flip. And so there's um, a driven one specific to this ID of bar, but um, I think they had one left in Fort Nine in Canada and then they were sold out and there's none left and they were 30 or 40 bucks. So. What I did, and it was maybe a bit rash, is that I trimmed the edge of the of the grip here so that it clamped to the bar, sort of as a proof of concept, and it does work. So what I might do over the winter is take this uh, to a machine shop and get them to either, like say, you know, machine this piece here down to 22 millimeters OD, or make a channel right in the middle for this to clamp to, or maybe you know from here on in. Um, so that it mounts the bar and just replace the the grip. Um, I guess I'm getting older or getting more, let's just say older. Um, these bar end weights, I notice a big difference in terms of vibration. I had a ZX-7R and, you know, oh, I got to put on some racy clip-ons. So when I took them off and rode it on the street, my hands fell asleep because just the, the, the vibration of the bike at highway speeds were terrible. 
Um, didn't feel that when it, when it had the stock heavy, heavy clip-ons and, and bar end weights. So I'm a fan of bar end weights. They do do a, a purpose, especially on a parallel twin. So the idea of, of mounting this to this and maintaining the bar end weight, which mounts in the end of the um, handlebar like perfectly, uh, that to me makes a lot more sense. So that'll be a winter project and I'll just replace the, replace the grip. Um, one of the things that you don't realize is that of course like this is a nice sharp edge here so that hits the edge of your palm so I've got an old cut off bit of grip here to help protect it um, and even the clutch hits on the clamp a bit so it should be further outboard but it works fine the clutch engages and disengages properly so total fashion statement I think the bike looks a hundred times better without horrible um, mirrors and this does work I can see behind me uh, quite well uh, and on this side um, kind of surprising and I don't know if it's a difference I don't think it's a difference in the case but you can see these spacers here there's three of them and they were all a bit short for this kit so there's a nice close um, fit between the cover and the guard um, but each of these is like I don't know 32 millimeters in length the black piece and then they add one or I think three washers underneath which to me is a bit cheap like cut the spacers to the right length and be done with it included in the kit but um, no one notices it but when I'm putting this together like here's the spacer oh plus three washers well if you're gonna just stack washers um, it, it's a bit shoddy so again uh, it might be a winter project to get these properly uh, you know get some material and, and get a proper length spacer you can maybe see it here with the camera but yeah there's three washers stacked up there so uh should have been done right so raximo is out of germany but i think like everything this is made in china nicely machined but i think that's where the where the stacking the washer uh comes up and i guess one of the last uh major unmodifications is i've got the stock exhaust back on again um the Leo Vinci exhaust looked cool, um, sounded good, but I read a fairly profound and, and convincing um, article online about um, aftermarket exhausts. And when I started riding bikes in 1996, like pipe in a jet kit, pipe in a jet kit, like you could save tens of pounds on an aftermarket, either full exhaust or slip on, and then, oh, well, you change the needles and the pilots and the mains and it runs okay uh, right for my first bike my 1997 ninja 500 pipe and a jet kit it sounded great wasn't too loud because the pipe itself was fairly long uh, no catalytic converter none of that stuff so um, the what I read online is that um, you know these bikes are, are fairly highly tuned from the factory especially you know something with an R model designation out of Austria and what I found and this is total seat of the pants dyno but when I you know since I put on the aftermarket exhaust I twist the throttle and things would get louder but it really didn't seem to uh, to pick up as fast as it was with a stock exhaust and sure enough a bunch of dyno tests um, a straight through exhaust that's bolted on after the catalytic converter adds two or three horsepower to the top end saves some weight no doubt but usually um, is either no improvement or a decrease in per performance in the mid-range and sure enough you know you'd, you'd be in third gear and oh i want to give it a bit of a squirt and and give myself a thrill here and I'd, I'd crack the throttle open and yeah it would get louder but it certainly didn't leap forward like it felt it did when I had the stock exhaust on so you know I just thought oh I've got time put the stock exhaust back on and the mid-range is better there's uh, I don't have a dyno to back it up and maybe I could get comparable performance if I had an aftermarket uh, tuning shop that could run this on the dyno but the the mid-range is where this bike's going to spend most of its life because it's a street bike and you know i'm not going to be racing it every weekend and the other thing too is that um it's quieter and now i'm sounding like an old fuddy-duddy but um, um 
over time, you know, that, uh, you know, droning along in the highway, it wasn't a drone, but it was just, just louder. And so uh, I, I prefer the stock exhaust. However, there is way too much uh, silver against a dark background. So yes, this is not, um, you know, I'm not going to make money wrapping cars for a living. Um, this is just some cheap carbon fiber wrap I got from the local Canadian Tire. Uh, several compound curves, no amount of heating or any technique I had could could get it in one piece going this way. So I did it in, in two pieces. There's a seam right there. There's a couple of bubbles. But again, it's more of a proof of concept to see if um, covering this up looks better. And in my humble opinion, it does. So this will not be here forever. It's, um, truth be told, it's it's uh, it looks like cheap crap that that Honda Civic drivers put on their car no offense to anyone who drives a Honda Civic um, but it's fake so there's a couple options um, they there's a couple companies that make a carbon fiber um, guard here which which would be which would be nice or the other thing too is that the local um, um, powder coating shop uh, who's done some work with me on other projects has a ceramic coat so the idea of maybe ceramic coating this um, a matte black might look good and it'll match the um, match the uh, tailpiece here so again um, winter project but uh, yeah that's that's about it I'm not sure if there's any more parts coming in uh, I was saying to my wife like now that I've, I've you know quit racing 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 and building bikes and buying parts and all that sort of stuff you know when I've sold all my old race parts I got nothing nothing else to buy so anyway getting back to the exhaust article um, again pretty profound argument that that the stock system um, is is exceptional in terms of the performance it provides um, some slip-ons again they'll provide top end and a lot more noise but lighter weight uh, you can get rid of the catalytic converter and some guys have a decat pipe plus a stock exhaust say it sounds great but then you need to tune it because it's going to be running super lean and again there's no shop around here that i can tune it or the full factory akropovic or akropovic system with the ktm map that my local dealer could give me but the exhaust system is in like 15 or 1600 dollars so and again, it might be so bloody loud that it'd be perfect for a track bike or a race bike, but uh, bombing along the highway, it's uh, it's no fun. Actually, currently, um, I hear more wind noise in my helmet than, than I do exhaust. So, yeah, I guess, I don't know. Um, <laughs> you could say I'm getting old and boring, but, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with a stock exhaust, I don't think. So, I'm sure people will say I'm crazy, but uh, the good news is, I was able to uh, recoup almost all of my money uh, with the Leo Vinci exhaust. I sold it to a, a young guy who is quite excited to get it and um, it was in perfect shape. So I, I feel happy with that sale. So um, yeah, I guess the only other thing is I got caught out the other day, went for, uh, went for a ride to visit a buddy and um, you know, driving rural Manitoba, oh, I'll stop for gas in this town. Oh, I should have stopped one town sooner because they had premium at the pump um, ended up um, putting I don't know 20 bucks worth of just uh, regular 87 octane fuel in it and um, me being me I definitely rode it less aggressive with the lower octane fuel in it because it was almost a full tank um, but I didn't notice any any terrible running you know no pinging or anything to do with uh, with octane, I'm not sure what it would do if you ran poor gas in here, but um, it's my baby, and I want to put the best stuff in it. So uh, anyway, it'll um, it'll still run on low octane. Oh, one last thing: um, front axle sliders. You can see them here towards the front. More orange anodized stuff um, uh, from I get these from China. Might have been a reseller in the states they're obviously chinese made but uh this is well ma machined and this is just some delrin so again when i get out to the track hopefully soon 
Um, if I do low side the bike, these will protect the uh, the fork lowers from being scratched up. So anyway, um, yeah, I think that's it. So there will be the odd more parts to come in, but I'm hoping to get out to a track day on uh, August 20th. Uh, so cross fingers that takes place and I uh, get to try this out on the track.